this is Levi Comstock from CountertopEpoxy.com. Today we're going to show you how to do a butcher block countertop. We're going to go over how to build the butcher block countertop and again I'm going to explain to you that I have never done this before in my life. I've never built a butcher block but I have built quite a few wood tops um, and barn wood and all different types of material. Um, so, some of these, um, the things we're going to go over are going to be whether it's concrete, wood, slate, it doesn't matter. It's a porous material. You're having to try to get it flat. You're leveling it. You're trying to seal it so the air doesn't come out um, and mix enough product to actually get a flood coat. So this one um, is a pretty fun project and you'll see kind of our journey that took us two full days to actually complete this countertop. But it looks pretty amazing and I think we're going to turn it into a coffee table. So come with us through the process and watch how we did it. Um, Thanks. Um, I got a bunch of pre-made sticks that have three sheets, three essentially boards laminated together and I bought these at Lowe's. And all I did was ran them through the chop saw and chopped up a bunch of squares. Um, I used a guide, I set up a guide so they're all the same length. So they should all set and stack out pretty nicely. Um, there's poplar, I believe this is, and oak. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mix and match these um, back and forth and I'm gonna try, I don't know if you guys can see, but lengthwise there's a kind of a pattern and I'm just gonna try to tee these all into each other so they're all alternating patterns. And a few of them I cut a little bit shorter. And what I'm gonna try to do is build around it with the other ones and then fill these with a cool color like turquoise or copper or something. So um, I'll go ahead and get started. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place these all out on the table and I brought some ratchet straps. And like I say, I've never done this, but I guarantee it'll look cool before I quit. Um, and we'll strap it all together and we'll use epoxy for it and put them all together and see how cool we can make this look. trying to seal up the top and if nothing else this is going to bind this together enough and hold all the blocks together so I can flip it over tomorrow and what I plan on doing is probably trawling some um, a little bit of our wall epoxy because it doesn't sag at all and I can fill all the um, I can fill all the 
voids on the bottom so that this will start actually holding the epoxy, especially around all our low blocks, so we can fill them up with a different color and make a really cool pattern. So. So now that we finally sanded it, I think we used a planer on it, a sander, a belt sander, and then a, a regular buffer with a sanding disc it turned out to be the best. And now I'm just going to put a little bit of boiled linseed oil, and I'm trying to just keep it on the high spots here. I don't want it down in my low spots there. I just want to kind of stain this wood up here and see what it looks like. Okay, so now that we have it sanded, we took it back over to the office so we can, we're not going to be making that much dust anymore. And we went ahead and we're mixing with some epoxy with some translucent gold and some with some light turquoise. And we're going to fill the squares that we left low and see what we get. So I just decided to go ahead and pour it all out on here and I'm going to fill all the cracks and um, use a putty knife kind of to squeegee it in. We'll fill all the low spots and the and see what we get out of this. Hi, welcome back. Today I'm actually wearing my diamond coat shirt. I apologize, I didn't share it, um, change for you guys. Um, this is our commercial brand um, of resin if you ever want to come to a class or anything. Um, we did fill this one more time and we just put a couple, trialed a few different colors down into the cracks and this is what we sanded yesterday. So now we're going to go ahead and just sand it off to expose that wood one more time. So this should be turning into a pretty flat um, butcher block that should be pretty easy to to go ahead and do a clear over today and we'll be done. So we'll see how this goes.
Okay, so we went ahead and sanded this. Um, from this point right here, this is a butcher block that we built. But from right here, it would be the exact same process if you built if you built a butcher block in the same steps that we showed you, or if you had an old butcher block in your house, a butcher block countertop. Um, you can always take a nasty old butcher block. Um, try to get all the oil and the grease out with some isopropyl alcohol. I usually use 91% um, isopropyl. It's a low percentage of water, so it'll actually pull any um, oils and water and attract it to itself, and you can clean it off. Then I would just sand it. Um, get the look you want, make it look pretty. And what we're gonna do right now is a skim coat. So from right, right here, you could just be skim coating, um, which is a very thin coat of epoxy. All it's meant to do is um, soak into all the wood um, and block it. Now that's gonna stop right there. If you wanted to quit right there, that's fine because at that point, that's a very long-term sanitary countertop. Um, and it's not gonna let your chicken juice or whatever you cut on it get down into the wood and actually uh, mold or anything. Um, you also, from right here, um, you can do the skim coat, which will block air bubbles and pour a flood coat. If we did pour a flood coat right now, anything that's porous, like wood or concrete, if you just go right straight to a flood coat and you pour a really thick epoxy coat, it'll look really beautiful, but air will just keep coming out of that wood. It'll just keep air bubbling into this. Um, so the way to get rid of that is seal it with a really thin coat that's so thin that if air goes up into it, there's nowhere for it to get trapped, so it'll just keep pushing through. So here we just mix 16 ounces, which is probably a lot more than we need. And we're gonna trowel this around on here. Um, essentially just work it in to the surface so that it really seals it up. working it back and forth trying to get any of the um, areas that are soaking it up and get becoming dry. I'm just trying to um, stop any of that by just keep trailing it back and forth over it. So about three hours ago, we went ahead and sealed this with a skim coat. That's just a really thin coat that seals in the wood. Right now your butcher block's done if that's all you want and you want to keep a satin finish. So if you don't want to see any gloss and you don't want a sheet of epoxy on top um, for a real high gloss, um, you could probably stop right here. We're going to go ahead and do this a little more decoratively. So we're going to pour a flood coat, which we already mixed over the top and spread it out evenly. Um, it's gonna add a little three-dimensional aspect to this, but if you cut on it a lot, you definitely will get some little cut marks. Um, you can polish those out with time, it doesn't really matter. Um, I've had a pretty old cutting board in my house for a long time that I did this with, and you definitely can tell where you cut, but it's actually, it's definitely not ruined and it's very sanitary. And because I coated both sides of it, I can throw it right in my dishwasher and it's never, it never damages it or anything. So, um, this is a little too big for the dishwasher, but we're gonna go ahead and finish this and see what kind of sheet of glass we can get on this and just see how pretty we can make it. So here we go. So there you go, um, it's totally sealed with a flood coat. Um, I poured that one a little bit thicker, that's probably about 10 square feet per gallon here um, as far as how much material I mixed. And I will come back here a few more times um, and torch it, probably in the next hour, hour and a half, to get any little air bubbles that pop through. Um, again, you would use this very similar product process whether you're building a butcher block or a plank countertop or almost anything else. The most, um, the most important thing to remember is to get everything as flat as possible, as level as possible, and definitely do your skim coats. Generally we do two, this is pretty hard wood, um, and I actually did rub a little bit of oil into it, so I thought it was already pretty sealed up, which is probably the case. Um, if a few little air bubbles do come through, and I can't get them out of the surface um, until that, I'll probably flood coat it one more time, but um, I just want this to be a sheet of glass. I'm probably gonna make a coffee table out of it or something. Um, but remember, anything porous, concrete, wood, 
um, slate, natural stone, whatever you're co coating, you always have to skim coat it, you always have to get it level. And if you want that um, thick um, clear coat on it, never go under 20 square feet per gallon. So thanks for tuning in today to our channel. Please remember to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and always call our office at 970-639-9338. And um, we have quite a few people here that are amazing artists, um, and they'll walk you through the process. Um, thanks for watching again, and have a good day.